Previously on Master Chef Canada, you'll be making lunch with the Toronto Maple Leafs. <laughs> the home cooks face their first team challenge. Come on, guys, we do not want to go home. The blue team scored big. Yeah! While the home cooks on the white team don't get moody with me because you messed up. Had to face an intimidating pressure test. Shit. In the end, oh my god, it was heartbreaking for Brooke. I'm sorry. Whose Master Chef dream came to an end. Tonight, we want you to think outside the box. The home cooks square off in the biggest mystery box yet. Ooh. You never know what's going to be underneath those suckers. And a kitchen mishap. Oh, God, medic. Oh, God, that looks serious. Changes the game. No, I can't finish now. In an elimination challenge that pushes the home cooks to their limits. This borders on prison food. There's only 13 of us cooking. One person's going home, and I got to make sure it's not going to be me. Wow. I'm stoked. I'm at the top of my game here. I need to maintain that. You know when you're at the top of a roller coaster and you're about to come over the edge, like you feel like you're going to throw up? That's exactly what I feel like. Welcome back to the MasterChef Canada Kitchen. There are 13 of you left standing, each with a chance of winning $100,000 and the title of MasterChef Canada. It's time for your mystery box challenge. The home cooks must prepare a superb dish using the contents of the mystery box. Your performance in this mystery box challenge requires innovation, dexterity, and a little muscle. I do not want to see any more fish underneath this mystery box. <laughs> I've dealt with enough fish, especially with the team challenge. You never know what's going to be underneath those suckers. On the count of three, raise your boxes. One, two, three, lift. Yes, yes. Only one thing in your box is today, a classic meat grinder. I know that we're putting protein in there. I don't really care what kind, but we're dealing with meat today. I got a smile on my face. Powered by good old fashioned elbow grease. Oh crap, I got my meat grinder as a wedding gift. It's still in the box. You're gonna use that grinder to prepare the ultimate Canadian crowd pleaser, a burger. Oh. Burgers? Awesome. I come from beef country. <laughs> but we're not talking about your everyday backyard burgers. We want you to make something creative and unexpected. The most delicious thing we've ever tasted between two buns. <laughs> to do that, you get to use this. <laughs> you have bison, wild boar, musk ox, lamb, pork shoulder, kangaroo, turkey, and duck breast. Where's my beef, man? We want you to think outside the box, maybe even outside the bun. With that in mind, we've provided you with a selection of fresh baked pitas, flatbreads, and an assortment of beautiful buns. And no burger is complete without toppings. All the extras you'll need to make your burger break away from the ordinary. You will have full access to the equipment room, but you must use the meat grinder to make your patties. You have 45 minutes to grind your proteins, cook your patties, assemble your burgers, and name your creation. The home cook whose burger emerges as the best of the best will get a huge advantage in the elimination challenge. Your time starts now. Behind, guys, behind. Sir, watch your book. I'm not here to do home cooking. I'm here to take risks and be adventurous, and I think that's uh, what the judges are going to see today. If I had my choice, I would choose bison. Cut with a little bit of pork to give it that nice fat content. It's not too gamey. I think it works really well with the burger. Me, I would be going for the lamb. Really? I love lamb burger. I would add a little bit of goat cheese to it. I'd be looking for some mint, an apple, gastric type relish, fresh and crisp. Today I'm making a lamb burger. I'm going to try to do sliders, which is three burgers together. I needed to put a little bit more fat in it, so I'm adding a little bit of wild boar in here because it's nice and fatty. I did 50 push-ups this morning. So what do you do with the bread? I personally do not eat a lot of carbs. 
Is that how you keep your girlish figure? No carbs? Definitely. <laughs> making um, duck foie gras elf burger, and instead of using a bun, I'm using mushrooms. No one's expecting it, because I don't think I just do Asian. So let's pull out some French now. I've had kangaroo before, and I just love the flavors that it brings. I took these little pockets. I wanted to do a pouch, so it's going to be called a hopping sour pork pouch. What about kangaroo? It's very lean, tough, not a lot of taste. This is one I would skip. It's a very challenging one. Dale, are you feeling the pressure? All eyes are on you right now, too. Yeah. <laughs> is there a condiment going on this? I haven't really decided yet. Um, I know that I'm going to do some fried onions with it and shaved green apple. Well, you're adding raw apple to that. Yes, I am. That sounds a little risky. Um. I just have to worry about getting my fat content right. Oh, shit, I forgot to grab my fat. Wow. Eric, tell me what's in the bowl here. Some boar and some duck. And I haven't seasoned it yet. So what is going to be your secret seasoning? Oh. Sort of like uh, savory, spicy. And then I'm going to top it with some sweetness. So I'm going to grill some pineapple, and I'm canning bacon right now. Spicy, sweet, savory. Yeah. Interesting. <laughs> Kayla, can you tell me what kind of burger you plan to make? Duck and pork burger. Crispy fried onion rings, warm mushroom salad, and a homemade roasted garlic aioli. Any concerns? I want to make sure that I have enough flavors. It's not too simple of a burger, as long as I get it done in time. <laughs> you have 15 minutes remaining. It's going to be the black sheep burger, so I'm going to use the leg of lamb. I've got some rosemary and fresh oregano, goat's cheese spread, some back on the noir. You're putting wine in it as well. Yeah, yeah. I That's wanted a good acidity man. with the lemon for you. You finished with this? Yeah, you can take it for sure. Okay, bye. I'm making what I'm going to call an umami bomb burger. So I'm going a little bit Japanese today, which is a little outside of my element. Rendering some duck fat that I'm going to do my burgers in, foie gras, really heavily caramelized onions with, and uh, bison, wild boar. Interesting combo. So Eric's just moving things along. Caramelizing pineapple, caramelizing some bacon. That's a lot of oil. Yeah, buddy, moving like the wind. You have 10 minutes left. And don't forget to come up with that amazing name of your dish. Lamburg, because my mom says Hamburg. I'm making lamb burgers, so Lamburg. I can't, I can't think. Come on, burger. It's going to be bomb. This is an enormous burger, but when I had it in Greece, it was pretty big. Me and my husband split it. Julie's just put her burger into the pan, and it is one thick burger. She is going to run tight on time. Behind. Five minutes left, guys. Five minutes remaining. You need to start dressing the plates, putting the garnishes on, and getting ready for presentation. Oh, that foie gras is good. Hot, 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 hot. Fantastic. Oh, my god. I can eat this every day. You always panic in the last minute. Ah, just the way they handle that knife, it just makes me... Look at that. Oh, God, medic, big medic. Oh, my God. Red knife just slipped right... Oh, God. Oh, God, that looks serious. I was just rushing, being careless. The knife slips and just cuts through. Is it bad? I can't finish now. No, I can't finish now. You need to have it taken care of. While Eric is getting stitches, the rest of the home cooks have only seconds to finish their mystery box burger challenge. Whew. Ten seconds left. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Hands up. Stop cooking. After observing and sampling throughout the challenge, the judges will now take one final look to select the top dishes for tasting. It tastes better than it looks. Generally, we were impressed by your ambition and creativity. I look at my plate, it's stunning. There were several burgers that really stood up, and we want to examine them further. One of the home cooks we call forward will get a huge advantage in the upcoming Illumination Challenge. The first burger we'd like to see used a bold mix of proteins. It was creatively plated and named. Dale, please bring up your plate. 
I was really doubted from the team challenge. It feels so amazing to be put in the front. Hopping sour pork pouch. Pork and kangaroo burger, baby cherry tomatoes, and slices of the apple. Kangaroo would have been one of the proteins that I would have skipped, but who knows? Well, the flavors jumps out at you in a good way. Thank you, Chef. Great presentation. The kangaroo stands up. That's a Halpin burger. Thank you, Dale. Never seen apple used in a burger before. Is that pickled in something? Or? Some apple cider vinegar just to keep it from turning color. Very smart. Very delicious. If you keep cooking like this, you'll be the one to beat. Thank you, Chef. Thank you. The second burger we like to try gets an A for ambition. Its name promises big flavors. Please step forward. Josh. Josh has some skills, and he can really put together flavors really well, and that freaks me out a bit. The umami bomb. The meat's a mix of wild boar, bison, and foie gras with a togarashi mayo, truffled oyster mushroom with a crispy fried duck's egg. It blends quite nicely. It's a little bit greasy. Overall, it's a very nice dish. Thank you, chef. It smells rich. What's going to cut through all this richness? The togarashi mayo. Very nice. Thank you, chef. Love the name. And certainly from the descriptive you've given, big and bold and daring. Exactly how I like my burgers. Good texture on the burger and seasoned really well. It's the kind of burger you'd expect to see at a fine dining restaurant. Appreciate that, chef. I feel pretty relieved to get the judging out of the way. I mean, the comments are really positive. They definitely saw what I was going for. They definitely tasted what I was going for. The third home cook on our list played it a little safer, but their cooking instincts have put them at the forefront of this competition. Kayla, please bring your oink and duck burger to the front. I'm just praying to God that they love it. Hi, chefs. Tell me about the burger meat. A whole duck breast, pork shoulder, crispy fried onion, melted aged cheddar, and a warm mushroom salad. Perfect the way the fat came through here. Oh, good. So tell me about the inspiration for this beautiful burger creation. My boyfriend's obsessed with burgers, so I really channeled my burger instincts today. <laughs> that makes me weak in the knees. Thank you. Kayla, you're up here again. I am. There's a lot of meat. How many boyfriends do you have? <laughs> Just one, <laughs> I promise. It's quite a mouthful, but it's a great mouthful. Thank you, Chef. I am on cloud nine right now. Generally, in the Mystery Box Challenge, we throw the spotlight on three outstanding dishes. But today, we've decided to try four. I have one out of three chance, and there's a fourth person coming up. That dwindles my chances of being a number one. The home cook that we'll be calling out next used a single protein in a clever way. Come on. I know it's me. It's going to be my name. They're going to call me. Mike, please come up. Yeah. <sighs> the black sheep burger. I've got lamb and then onion jam. Goat cheese spread, and then I actually toss the arugula and tomato pulp and lemon juice. This to me is a well thought out burger. The ingredients you chose work together very well. Classic, great combinations. Nice to see you coming out on top. <laughs> Thank you. You know it lacks something. What's that, sir? A nice glass of wine. I love it. Thank you, chef. Now we need a moment to discuss. In 
terms of balance of taste. It was still delicious. Yeah. Yeah. I would want to eat the whole thing now. Yeah. So far, I've definitely been the bridesmaid, not the bride. Everyone that I'm standing there with is out to get me at this point. Very tender, very juicy, texture-wise. They're taking way too long to decide right now. They were all very good. They're all very... I think I might win this challenge, actually. I'm the only one who didn't put every single farm animal in their burger. So we all agree. <sighs> all four burgers were fantastic. There was one, however, that stood out from the herd. This could be a first place finish, finally. If I don't get the advantage, I could really be screwed. And that burger belonged to... Kayla. Thank you. Good for her for winning the challenge, but I'm not worried about Kayla. Thank I you. I definitely don't think she's going to be coming after me or anything, so... For winning today's Mystery Box Challenge, you get to join us in the Master Chef Pantry. Follow us. A lot of people underestimated me when I came into this. I think I'm really showing the other home cooks I have what it takes, and I'm here to win it. Kayla is now in control of the elimination challenge and gets to choose the ingredients that all the other home cooks must use. The winner of the mystery box challenge gets a huge advantage. You won't have to cook today. Thank you. Now for your second advantage. We're going to show you three iconic Canadian ingredients, each paired with a quintessential Canadian beverage, beer. Awesome. Your fellow competitors will have to cook with the ingredient and the beer that you choose today. I want to get Josh out 100%. It's a competitive, strategic decision. Now for your first option. It's naturally sweet, just like me. 85% <laughs> of the world's supply comes from Canada. Maple syrup. It's not just for pancakes. Wow. It's a secret ingredient for great cooks everywhere. And we have chosen a great beer to complement maple syrup, a Galaxy Hop Ale with subtle tropical fruit undertone. Your second option is a fruit that prospers north of the 49th parallel. Can you guess what it is? I was really bad at geography. <laughs> I love your honesty. Apples. We've paired these apples with a crisp Cascade Hop Ale because of its subtle notes of fresh citrus. Your third option is smoky, salty, irresistible. Great as a hearty accent or all on its own. Care to guess what it is? I am thinking it is my favorite ingredient, which is bacon. Yum. A beloved Canadian classic. Along with the bacon is Holler Tower Hop Ale. A perfect complement to this pork, with its mild herbal flavors and traces of spice. So, Kayla, would you say that any of these food and beer combinations would pose a challenge to you if you were cooking? I don't love fruit, so apples would be something I would be concerned to cook with. And how about your fellow home cooks? <sighs> I think Josh would have trouble with the apple as well because he tends to overcomplicate his dishes. Okay, Kayla. It's time for you to decide. I choose... Eric, welcome back. As you can see, Kayla won the last mystery box challenge. Did everyone else cut themselves? <laughs> hmm, I wasn't expecting that. I'm not, I'm not too concerned because I'm up here and he's down there. <laughs> Kayla is not going to be cooking today. She's safe from elimination. That's her first advantage. As for her second advantage, Kayla was presented with three iconic Canadian ingredients, which we paired with a quintessential Canadian beverage, beer. Yes. You're all going to be creating a stunning dish using the ingredient that she chose and the beer, which we felt best complemented it. Kayla chose... Apples at Alexander Keith's Cascade Hop Ale. Beer and apples. Shit, what are we gonna do? And Kayla has one final advantage that we have yet to reveal to her. You get to choose two home cooks who must use these apples and the Cascade Hop Ale to make us a delicious dessert. I can't bake, so I'm trying to smile at Kayla really pleasantly so she doesn't pick me to bake. When it comes to desserts and baking, on a scale of one to 10, I'm probably around a six. Who is your first choice? My 
first choice is Josh. Bring it on. I don't really want to bake today, but she wants to drop the bomb on someone she sees as competition, so hey, I'll take that. Kayla, you can choose one more home cook who must make a dessert. I think this person just shot themselves in the foot with their comments, so I'm picking Eric. Because he overthinks things, is very scattered in the kitchen, and may not be able to get a dessert done in the allotted time. Eric gets under my skin a little bit. He knocked it a good tart once. That was a total fluke. I don't think he can do it twice. Eric, how do you feel about that? I am not a baker. <laughs> I'm not too big on desserts. I haven't made many desserts. I absolutely feel fabulous. Remember, the rest of you can go either way you want, savory or sweet, main dish or dessert. You'll have full access to the Master Chef Canada pantry. Are you ready? Yes, Chef. Chef. Your 60 minutes starts now! The two home cooks who make the best dishes will become team captains in the upcoming field challenge. Whoa. And at least one home cook will be sent home. Oh, pork belly. <laughs> Are you kidding? You're keeping me away from that shit? Oh, Kayla, you're so going down for this. Where's the fennel? I always overthink, and I'm in the pantry scattered. It's nerve wracking. Oh, 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 oh. Oh. I'm doing a pork loin chop. I'm gonna make a honey beer glaze with an apple relish. Pork with the apples and maybe a coleslaw. We'll see when we get there. I'm gonna be making a beautiful pork chop. Beer, pork, just makes a lot of sense. Everyone almost selected pork. I would have to say they're taking the safe route. For me, it is apple fritters. I'd be making a beer batter. I'd probably add hazelnuts or macadamia nuts to that beer for texture, exactly. I'd roast down and melt down some apple to almost make a little puree, sweeten it up a touch. Delicious. Finished. I would do sweet. I would have cinnamon, maple syrup. I would use the beer as well. I would really let those apples sing and be the star of that show. I'm gonna do a sort of Italian donut. There's gonna be some beer in the batter and caramel that I'm gonna be making. I'm gonna be making a classic apple pie with a beer and caramel. The pastry can definitely go wrong. It needs to like rest and cool, and that's a lot to do in one hour. For me, savory. So I would take the beer and use it to steam a delicate seafood, like scallops or shrimps, and apple salad. Uh, I'm gonna do something with pork, tarragon, apples, and beer. My flavors are gonna be spot on. The beer, orange, apple, a little cinnamon for some surprise, garlic. I think they'll really enjoy that. Well, I hope they do anyway. Well, Kayla stuck me with uh, baked goods, so I'm actually gonna make some apple and beer infused profiteroles with some caramelized apples on the side. Everything can go wrong. They're finicky as hell, which is a 60 plus minute dish. I gotta get going, I gotta speed some things up here. When you cut up fennel, do you take the core of the fennel? I, you can, you don't have to. Hi there, Carly. You seem a little bit uh, shook up there. It's, uh, what's going on? What's what's I'm worrying you? I'm really hoping that this turns out. I'm... How come? What what's sparking that? I don't know. I, I don't know. I'm always a little bit nervous. I am flailing the entire time. This is horrible. Oh man. Sweet Jesus, it's rough in the MasterChef Canada kitchen. The home cooks have one hour to create a MasterChef quality dish featuring apples and beer. Kayla has upped the stakes by choosing Josh and Eric to make desserts. Throw anything you want at me, I can handle it. I'll knock it out of the park. And at the end of this challenge, at least one home cook will be eliminated. Eric is running around the kitchen at 100 miles an hour, mock speed, with the crankiest look on his face. Eric. Hey, Chef. So what are you making then for today? This What's is just an apple pie filling. And how confident are you that you can pull this off? Uh, not too confident. But you did such a great tart earlier on. Uh, I think that was a fluke, Chef, <laughs> yeah. Hmm. Julie, what are you making here today? I'm making an apple zeppoli, and I'm incorporating the beer inside my batter and also inside my caramel. Like a donut? Yes. Mm. <laughs> Isn't that what you did for the audition? It is what I did for the audition, okay. but it's going to be completely different. You change the name, but it's still ultimately a donut, right? All right, well, we'll see. We will. Josh. Chef. So you were forced to make a dessert. I was absolutely forced to make a dessert. That wouldn't be my go-to. 
So what dessert are you making? Basically, I'm doing beer and apple-infused profiteroles, caramelized onions, beer, uh, caramel topping it with a couple uh, crunchy nuts for some texture. I hope you guys are going to enjoy it. Well, sounds like you've got a lot to get done in a short time. I sure do. Good luck. Thank you, Chef. So, uh, you have been making a lot of desserts so far, and you are changing your strategy. Yeah. Why? Well, because all these people think I can do is bake, so i got to show them I got a little bit more under the hood than one trick. Well, who do you think is going to go home? I think the ones that are staying comfortable are the ones that are going home. Very nice. Thank you very much. Danny's running around like a chicken with his head cut off. He's super scatterbrained and all over the place. Hey, Danny. I noticed, you know, half the beer's gone. I got one here, bud, if you oh. want it. Oh, but yeah, thank you. <laughs> thank you very much. So what are you doing there? Spicy and sweet pork, small potato, a little sour apple coleslaw. Portuguese. No, it's a little twist. Apple and, apple and pork, it's not Portuguese? Yeah, it is, of course, but got to change it up a little bit. Danielle, what are you cooking today? Apple beer glazed pork loin, crushed potato, a little bit of spicy mustard in the potato to balance out with the honey that goes in it. So you're feeling pretty confident about your dish? I'm feeling sort of confident. Well, this I'm is an elimination bit... challenge. Oh, yeah. I'm cooking to save my life, for sure. Hey, Pino. Chef Claudio. It smells nice. So here, what are you making? I'm going to make a pork chop with lentils and an apple compote. So what are you going to do to stand out? Because there's a lot of pork happening right now. The apple compote I'm going to make is really going to stand out. And then I'm going to make like a beer reduction. Do you think it needs some herbs? And I start second guessing myself. All right, good luck. Thank you. I start tasting things. And the combination of flavors that I expected isn't there. You have 15 minutes left. Good luck in there, boys. I'm totally freaking out. At this stage of the game, they've got to be cooking for their lives. Do we have a grater? Oh, yes. Carly, yeah. she's just peeling apples. She's unraveling. I, I, I feel bad for her, actually. What about Dora? What do you think Dora's up to right now? I was impressed. She can do savory dishes. You have five minutes left. You need to be plating, putting the finishing garnishes, and details. I'm worried about Eric. He's left it very, very late. I'm going to pull it out like last second because it's, it's crunch time. I'm a little bit nervous right now. i got to get everything on the plate real quick. You have one minute left. Oh, dear God. It looks raw. Ten seconds left. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, Two, one, hands up. Yeah. Yeah. Dora, please bring your dish up. So what do we have here? Seared pork chop, cornbread muffin, and a crab apple jelly. Beer, where's the beer? Beer in the sauce, vinaigrette, cornbread. Wow. Is this a classic Dora baked good? Try with some of that jelly, it's awesome. This is the jelly? Yes. It's very tasty. Thank you. Let's cook perfectly. I like the whole dish. Thank you. The sauce you've made has great depth of flavor again. Awesome. Between the apples, the beer, the deglazing of the pan, you've hit wonderful great notes. Well done. I hope this knife is big enough. I need a bigger fork. <laughs> I tell you, where you come from, everything must be big. Well, I got big appetites out in Alberta. Where I come from, this can feed the whole city. This is Scarborough. <laughs> Shake your hand, that's a good sign. Oh, no, that, okay, don't do that to me. <laughs> Those pork chops are beautiful. Thank you. They're moist, thick, and that's how pork chops should be done. Thank you so much. Oh, thank Christ. 
Pino, please come up. Pork chop, creamy lentil, some pancetta and vegetables, beer, some lemon and parsley. And a little apple compote beside it. This doesn't look like something you would do because the other dishes I've seen from you look very elegant. I don't know what to say, I'm speechless. It doesn't taste very good and it looks worse. This borders on prison food. It's sad. You know, you're like a roller coaster. You go up, you go down, you go up. This is down. I might be on the chopping block today. Josh, come on up here. I can smell the beer coming from my plate. It smells pretty good. It looks really good. I hope the judges agree. What is this? For Federals, infused with the Alexander Keith's Cascade Hop Ale, filled with a goat cheese and mascarpone cream, surrounded by caramelized apples. Wow. Kayla there didn't think you could make dessert. I think that worked to my advantage today. The flavors come together. Apple slightly underdone. Would have removed the peel, but well balanced. She's wrong. <laughs> Thank you, chef. I look up at Kayla. Her bomb did not land today. Eric, please bring up your dish. I'm feeling it for poor Eric. What is on his plate? Eric, tell me about your dish, please. It's an apple pie, beer caramel, seasoned with cinnamon, nutmeg, some beer, honey. Well, the flavors are there in the apple, that's for sure. The pastry, undercooked. Yeah. It's not a great dish, huh? Very disappointed, chef. See all the layers and how flaky that is? Yeah. It takes a lot of experience to try and get that. The only thing you did wrong is you underestimated how long it would take to bake it. Make calculated moves. Slow down. Instead of 100 miles an hour, try 90. It's really embarrassing because they think that I'm sloppy and I rush too much. It's just unacceptable for Master Chef. Danielle, would you please come up with your dish? Walk me through your dish, please. Apple and beer glazed pork. And then it's served with a crisp apple and pancetta salad. And I must say, the presentation is very clean. There's a few out there that could learn from that. Thank you. Pork looks like it's cooked rather nicely. A little touch of pink there. Very good flavors. And you deglaze the pan to make a little jus here? Absolutely. Well, there you got the flavor of the hops coming through, and the pork. I'm impressed, Danielle. Thank you. Well done. I'm thrilled that my pork dish is standing out from the rest. Julie, could you bring your dish up, please? <sighs> this is an apple zeppoli with beer in the batter and a mascarpone creme anglaise. I find it very dull. We could have done so much more with the apple. You know, every time you come up here, it's an opportunity for you to show what you can do. Suffering from a case of deja vu here, you think you can win this competition cooking donuts? Maybe I can, but that's not my strategy. You can't. We need to see more. Carly, please come up. Oh, my God. My dish is not what I imagined it to be at the beginning. I am scared I'm going home. Beer and fennel marinated pork chop, beer salad dressing, and browned apples with the celery root puree. The presentation is monochromatic. But I do like the idea of the salad, which has the apple, 
and fennel. Mm -hmm. The apple stands up very well in that. The beard doesn't come through as strong as I think it should. Not your best efforts, but it is what it is. Your dishes usually have um, a harmony to them. They, everything makes sense. What happened? I didn't have a clear plan. I don't know, I was super flustered. I appreciate the pressure you're under, but ultimately, it all boils down to how you deal with that pressure. I think the pressure got to you here. Danny, would you please bring up your dish? Danny's dish looks like an 80s throwback from like a really bad diner. Beer marinated spicy pork with sour apple slaw, beer, honey, mixed apple chutney. So it's a little spicy and sweet together. So it's a stewed pork dish with a mayonnaise based slaw in the center. I struggle with the two coming together on one plate. It tastes marginally better than it looks. We really need to see that you're not a one-trick pony. I don't think you've done that for us. I don't taste apple or beer in that. This is the worst dish I've had so far. Please go back to your station. I should have stepped out of the box and did something else. I screwed up on that. Now we need a moment to discuss. got two right away. I would agree with that. That dish is horrendous. Big disappointment. I have never been in the bottom before. I know I'm going to be in the bottom and probably going home. I still have lots to learn. I don't want to go home. In this elimination challenge, there were two dishes that deeply impressed us. The first dish had a number of well-executed components. That dish belonged to... I want to be a forerunner in this sucker. Good God. Danielle. I stuck to elevated meat and potatoes, and it worked for me. Amazing job, Danielle. Thank you, Chef. But there was another dish that we liked even more. The home cook that made it will, like Danielle, become a team captain in your next team challenge. And that home cook is... Dora. Sweet. Yay. I feel I did step up my game today. I think I scared a few people. Thanks, guys. <laughs> Congratulations, Dora. You've proven that you are one to watch in this competition. Awesome. Now for the bad news. There were three dishes that just didn't cut it. They were bad enough to send at least one of you home. The first dish was made by a home cook who we've come to expect a great deal from. Please step forward. Eric. The second disappointing dish did not do the trick. They're flavors that we've seen from this person again and again. Please step forward, Danny. The third unappealing dish belonged to Pino. Please step forward. With the premium ingredients available, you should have created a superb dish. None of you did. Danny, please step forward. The weakest dish in the elimination challenge belonged to you. Please take off your apron. But before you go, we want to thank you for the sincere and powerful flavors you brought to this competition. You stayed true to your roots, and I'm sure you made your father proud. Thank you. It means a lot that my dad's could be proud of me. Thanks, guys. I'm proud of the way I cook. I'm proud of my Portuguese roots. Deep down inside, I'm never gonna give up. Oh, 
I am a construction worker, but my love is with food. Big D's out. Eric and Pino, please go back to your stations. You've all survived another challenge. Go get some rest. You'll need it. The judges are really watching me now. They gave me a second chance, and I really have a lot to prove. On the next episode of MasterChef Canada, you'll be serving some of the country's most prominent artists. The home cooks must create edible works of art, and the tension is high. I need somebody over here stacked. Yeah, we got to get our butts in gear. Now! It all comes to a head in the pressure test. Use the spatula to force it off. Oh, cool. The only thing tropical about this is a typhoon hit it. Where one home cook's MasterChef journey will come to an end.